Good morning everybody, good morning. We are on the trail of a young male lion right here on the western boundary. I cannot show you the track purely because it's overcast. You're not really going to see it. We're not going to get much contrast. Um, two things happening here at the same time. We are hot on the trail of the wild dogs. We heard them calling somewhere on that ridge up ahead. That typical whoop, whoop, whoop. And then there's tracks of a male, young male lion up here. Either one of the two, I'm looking for that. And, oh yeah, probably need to introduce myself. My name is Chris Erasmus and with me on camera ups is Owen Dell, who is still with us here. And here, meaning this is Eco Training, where we are on the Pridelands Conservancy, just outside the town of Hoodspreit in the Lowfeld, far northeast of South Africa. Right, there we go, finally. A bit of an absence for the last couple of days and remember I said yesterday this is the time when they do move den sites quite regularly and they start letting the puppies move more and more and more with them so they're still with the den site that they've had for the last three days uh, they're about two three hundred meters from the den site uh, and they basically took the two puppies to just explore a little bit further away from the den under the watchful eye of the parents you can see dad's lying on the road there just keeping an eye out and as always we are keeping a, a very healthy distance from them Especially now that they're out and about in the open and not close to the den. We're not right up to them. We are giving them the necessary space. So they can, especially the parents can fully put their attention into the surroundings rather than looking at us. Hello, little guys. <laughs> Mom's growling at something there. Go and hide, little guys. Oh, you can just still see this Goliath here and still busy fishing. You had the inflow of twin dams. I'm hoping that we're going to get a kill very shortly so what it's doing it's going through the water very slowly it's got those long legs perfectly built and adapted to walk through these shallow areas hoping to see maybe something swimming by and then with a lightning fast strike it'll try and grab that fish from the water or a frog she is fast asleep spotted eagle owl so she's been here now for the last three days four days on the nest I'm sure she's got some eggs there how nice is this this is just brilliant try to look if we can see the male sometimes the male will be sitting close by just keeping his eyes on her making sure everything is safe here As well as he will do, he will assist her with, uh, of course, with some food. But if he's not successful in getting something, she'll sometimes fly out at night time and go and look for her own food around the area. But for now, during the daytime, she is fast asleep, and if there's eggs, she's busy incubating those eggs. Wow, look at this, look at this. We were just driving towards the dam now and we just saw multiple vultures moving down, descending. More to come, more to come. Uh, it's the remains of an impala carcass. And this is the region where we heard the dogs early in the morning. 
So I'm of the opinion that this is very likely the wild dogs that managed to bring down an impala. They filled themselves up and ran away, well obviously moved to the den. Look at this, this is spectacular. Mostly African white-backed vultures. And we're going to see more and more. Oh, here's a leopard faced vulture coming in. The big guy. It's coming. Wow. Look at this. It's coming. This is our largest vulture. This is such a treat. Look at that. Another white backed vulture coming in. Look at that. Oh, here comes the big guy. He's going to barge in, huh? Just grab these little piece there. So that's the leopard faced vulture, our largest vulture. Swart asful. And everybody makes way for the big guy. Here comes an <gasps> another, another, another one. Debbie, this is insane. Oh, my favorite vulture, this leopard faced vulture. The others are mostly African white backs. I've not seen any cape vultures amongst them yet. So look at the beak of those leopard faced vultures. Massive, robust beak. So they play a vital role. When animals have died of natural causes with that massive beak, they're one of the few vultures that can pierce skin and open carcasses up in order for other vultures to get it. They are also known to take small prey of their own. Wow, this is super stuff. Yeah, just more and more. No, they're going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming. Eh? And these are what we refer to as the old world vultures. And they forage mainly by the use of sight, as opposed to the new world vultures that mainly use scent. So what would happen here is vultures from far away will see these other vultures descending. They know there's food that's going to attract more and more and more vultures. There's Aina rocking up as well. There's Aina rocking up. Samsi Pubs, is there a hierarchy? Woo, chasing off, chasing off. There we go. And they're trying to figure out where it is. This is spectacular. Yes, there is a hierarchy. The Cape Vulture will dominate the white backs. <laughs> and off we go. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. Wow. One scavenger out with another. That's the top of the hierarchy currently. They're not going to take on the hyena.